So far with .NET 7, we have to choose between creating a Blazor server application or a Blazor WebAssembly application. Blazor server has the advantage of a fast first page load, but it comes with the expense of requiring a persistent WebSocket connection using SignalR. Blazor WebAssembly runs client-side on the browser and doesn't need ASP.NET Core as a host. However, the initial download takes longer because of the size of the application bundle, including the .NET runtime. Not all web applications need to be highly interactive. And choosing between Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly for a whole application is a big disadvantage of Blazor in .NET 7. With .NET 8, we will get server-side rendering. Server-side rendering will allow us to use the Blazor component model but run the application like an MVC or Razor Pages application. Let me explain what that is and how it works. If you're familiar with the JavaScript web world, Next.js, Svelte or Gatsby are well known for server-side rendering support. Astro is the new kit on the block and I used it for building a few websites. They provide us with a powerful, reusable component model at build time and static HTML output at runtime. With .NET 8, I don't need to fall back to those JavaScript web frameworks. Instead, I can combine the Blazor component model with the advantages of server-side rendering. The components are rendered on the server and the HTML output is sent to the browser. This allows for a quick first page load, a small download size and no signal R connection. We can still use interactive components with .NET 8. However, we don't have to choose for a whole application between Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly. Instead, we can choose the rendering mode for each component or each page. Let's take a look at the new Blazor Web Application Project template. The new .NET 8 Blazor project template is similar to the .NET 7 Blazor project template. A few things got renamed. For example, the index page is now called Home and the weather data page was renamed to Weather. Pages are now within a Pages folder and Layouts are within the Layout folder. All other components belong to the Components folder, which is the parent of those two folders. When we build and start the application, it looks almost the same as we know it from .NET 7. Let's open the developer tools to see what's happening behind the scenes. Remember, with .NET 7, you have a Blazor WebAssembly application downloading the whole .NET runtime at startup. Or with Blazor Server, the application establishes a persistent WebSocket connection using SignalR. As you can see here with .NET 8 and server-side rendering, we don't have anything of that. All you can see is HTML and CSS. The download size is small like a Blazor server app, but we don't have the WebSocket connection. When navigating to the counter page, the browser sends a GET request and downloads further HTML that Blazor explores and makes changes to the DOM. We get single page app like behavior without downloading the whole app during startup. When navigating to the weather page, the browser sends another GET request. However, we cannot see the response in the developer tools. I will explain shortly why that's the case. But first, let's see how we enable server side rendering for Blazor pages or components. Let's start with the home page. As you can see, you don't see anything. The code looks the same as we know it from previous .NET versions. I can only assume that when we do not have any interactive code, the default is now server-side rendering. However, let's take a look at the counter page. Here we have a new render mode server attribute. The description says that it is temporary and will be replaced by the at render mode directive in the future. At the time of recording this video, 
The release candidate 1 of .NET 8 has just been released and is what I'm using here. The attribute defines that we want to render the HTML on the server side for this page. Notice that we can also use child components and set their rendering mode. When we do not specify a rendering mode, the child component will behave the same as its parent component. But what if a page takes time to load? Remember, we didn't see any HTML when exploring the request sent when navigating to the weather page. Let's take a closer look at the weather page. We see another attribute at the top of the page. The stream rendering attribute indicates that we want to stream the rendering of this page. It means that we do not have the whole HTML ready to send as the response to the request. Instead, we quickly return the structure of the page and stream the data loaded from the database or a service as soon as it arrives. Stream rendering allows us to provide a responsive feel for the user while the data is asynchronously loaded on the server. If you want to explore .NET 8 server-side rendering with Blazor yourself, you need to install the .NET 8 preview or release candidate version. Use the following CLI command to create the Blazor application. At the time of this recording, there is no new project template available in Visual Studio 2022 preview. Server-side rendering is probably the most important new feature for Blazor in .NET 8. It allows us to use server-side rendering when it is sufficient and we can enable interactive components where we need them. We also can choose between Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly-like behavior for each page or component. For example, for building a website with mostly static content such as a company website or a blog, server-side rendering is a perfect match. Not every web page has to be highly interactive. And with Blazor server-side rendering, it makes Blazor a great choice for a wider range of web applications. Today, we looked at what server-side rendering is and how we can use it in Blazor starting with .NET 8. In the future, I will explore how to use interactive components using Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly within a Blazor.NET 8 application. Things will evolve until the official release of .NET 8 in November 2023. Stay tuned! Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in my next .NET video.